Craig here, Caravans by the Campfire. Now, we've got a smaller version, 16 foot Harbok. Yeah, it's a couple of things. And we had such a great response to the big, bigger van that we had last time. We thought we'd bring this smaller one out. And it's got some really great things about it. So we're gonna jump in our car, get down the dirt track to our favorite place and uh, show you. Right, so we're here. We're at the Bayview site, or the caravans by the campfire site, at uh, Greenman's on the Hawkesbury. Look at that. This is the kind of view you get. Straight down the river. This is tidal, right? So even when this goes out later on, there's no smell or anything. And that's mm. four or five hours, and then it comes in again. I reckon we could have our own boat ramp here, yeah. if we had a boat. Yes, <laughs> I want You have my to get yourself back. one. Well, our little dinky car can't handle having a boat on it as well as towing. I reckon we could get one of these. <laughs> if we had one of these, you see what's behind it? It's very good. Anyway, we're here. So what we're going to do first is take this van off the car. Uh, if you've seen any of our videos, I'm not huge on the on the jockey wheel, but we won't talk about that now. Yeah. So we get this. We'll just wind it down a little bit. Yeah. We don't do anything else at this stage. Just wind that down. So it's just on the ground. Yep, we come around here, just disconnect the electricity, because we don't need that. When I say the electricity, the coupling. Right. Just put that aside, and pull the handbrake on. Nice and firm. Yep, if you had some shocks now, you'd be putting that in around the wheels. But anyway, DO35 hitch. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave the chains on until we get this off the car. So the DO35 hitch is just to press the red button, push it in, that's ready to lift off now. Okay, I'm gonna see what happens. Let's crank on this, uh, this wheel, right? We're off. We're off. Not too bad. Okay, so that's off. It's not moving around. Now we can take the chains off. Now, see here these big hooks? I love them. I'll show you. Because a lot of times you're mucking around with this chain on the chassis. They put some little lugs here and there. And uh, these lugs though, it's big enough to fit that barrel bolt in. Yeah, usually you're mucking around, getting a bit of chain. Anyway, put that on there. Beautiful, mate. Now, we actually have a pin for this, so I'm gonna put it on. Yeah. We're just gonna leave this here for a few hours, come back later tonight. So Cruise Master DO35 hitch comes with this pin. Well, it doesn't come with it, you gotta buy it extra. Everything you gotta buy is through the caravan industry. <laughs> yeah, this is not through the van. It's just a lock for the pin, yeah? So we drop this pin down. Yep. Just drop that pin in there, push the button. Yeah, just turn it around here. Can you see? Uh, yeah, I think I can see them over your shoulder. You can't really see too well here. Mm. Well, that's where the key goes in, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure this has ever been off before. Right, there you go. You just plonk that in. Use the lock. Turn it, it goes on, turn it. There you go, all locked up. So if someone wants to steal this now, they're gonna have to take the whole hitch off and put a new one on, or something. Be a bit more creative. But that's a basic level of security, so that's good. Right here, I'll move the car out of the road and we'll get onto my favorite thing. Yeah. What is it? The electric awning. Electric awning, wait, <laughs> do you see this? It is fantastic. Any van should have electric awning. And those that are worried about 
have an electric awning, what if it fails? I'll show you what happens to these new ones if it does fail. There you go. Right, so we've got that off the car. We're just going to put these stabiliser legs down. <laughs> Old school. Have a look under here. <laughs> Old school style, right? Didn't bring my drill. Oh, well, uh, that'll take you, won't fine. it? You don't need a drill. Okay, what you can do here is use this. So rather than having to get under there and do all this, you just put this to hold the weight of that leg. Pull the red one. We just let it down nice and steady. Now this is perfectly flat ground, so we're just going to line that up straight. And we just turn this. Right. Okay. Now, when you put these down, you just want to take a little bit of weight of the van, nice and sturdy. These aren't for lifting the van up and down. Okay. Just gives it a lot of stability. Yeah, that's called there. airbags. But I'm sure, <laughs> otherwise, you'll just strip at the legs. So I'll quickly go around and do those four. Okay. Yeah, what's that mean? Yeah, switch. And out it comes. Hit a switch and out it comes. Yeah, that's go and all do I that. Go and do that. You want me to do it? Yeah, just got to undo these little Velcro things, things first. We've already undone yeah, the other end. Go and hit that button, mate. Oh, oh, here it is coming out. And I don't have to keep my finger on it. You don't. One flick and out it comes. And the door's open. It's good, yeah. So this awning is high enough that you could have the standard thing. You know what people do on their awnings? Mm. You know how have a clothesline? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So it closes high enough above that door there. Yep. So that you could leave that clothesline on and it won't be interfering with the door. So that's a good thing. Yeah. It's making a few noises. Now come around here. Mm -hmm. This is the key thing. A right. couple of things. People say, electric awning, what if it fails? Well, what if it fails? You've got to do something about it. So have a look out here. This has got a winder, okay? And there's a pole in that tunnel, tunnel boot booth. over there yeah. that you put it on and you just wind it and it winds itself all the way up and all the way back. So if you did have an issue, that's how you get yourself out of problems. And if you stopped by the side of the road for five minutes and it was super hot, just press that button. Yeah, Hit set yourself again. up. Press the button again and it stops wherever you want it to. If I was setting up for a few days, I'd have those little ring clips here tied down to the ground, mm -hmm. which I think most people would do. It's also got here, yeah. You can, yeah, you can feed in your um, external wall. Privacy you, screen. Yeah. And if you wanted to go to the trouble to get yourself one of those, um, what are they? Andy those flap kits. Andy flap kits. Assemble that on here, and then you could also have your external walls on the end here, or an extension, or whatever mm -hmm. you wanted. So that's how you fix it if it's a problem. But over here too, look at this feature. Yeah, and it's coming out now on all the electric awnings, I think, but this one here. You just pull down, right? Pull down on this end. See how it comes down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it's raining, you don't have to think, oh, I've set up my awning, what do I do? You just pull down here, tighten it up. Yeah, you just tighten it back up, and it's like that. So if it rains, the water's gonna run here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, into your U-bit bucket where you recycle your water, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Something like that. The bucket we forget. <laughs> There's other people that put in their soundtrack. There's a gutter system. Yeah, it's we like saw a, that when we It's like either canvas or polyester. It goes in there and you hook up a hose and you fill up your jerry cans. Oh, you know, he put it straight into his um, water tank. Great idea. But it was pouring. Yeah, it is. And it, w it was raining really heavy and he filled up one tank yep. in like less than half an hour. Okay, come over here, we'll have a look. So this is the entertainment hatch. We've just got our Starlink in there because it's got a 240 volt double power point in there, mm -hmm. right? It's also got this external plug where you can plug in your solar. If you've got an external blanket, 12 volt. And around here's the bracket for the TV. Wood delivery. Excellent. They do oh, for you up here. I haven't got my hat on. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. This is good. See, if you come up here, this is Peter. You ask Peter, he will help you out. Yep. Right, is that right? Guys. See you next time. See ya. Thanks, see you mate. next time. Have a good one. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for all that. Right, I'm going to have a look around the outside. So, on the front here, you've got the standard jockey wheel. Now, you know what I think about jockey wheels, but. This one here, for how high this van's off the road, 
seems to be okay. Just be aware if you're doing a lot of traveling and you're going off-road and you want to rely on this to move things around, you're going to have a little bit of an issue. But um, this one seems to be doing the job. You can upgrade to a Boss Jockey wheel or one of those other ones, what are the electric ones? Blackjack. Blackjack, something like that. Just get it on and off your car easy. But that's what it is. So anyway, so around here, all the standard stuff. DO35 hitch, yep. Breakaway brake controller, handbrake, external tap, plug in for your rear camera. Yeah, mm -hmm. all pretty normal. This is unique to them, so it's not the Safety Dave one or anything, but um, they give you all the right things, so you have to get connected. Yeah, 12 pin plug. Yeah. Anderson plug here. I really like this. See here, these latches here are big enough to hold the barrel of that. You get a lot of ants where it doesn't sit on there and you're trying to you're trying to link your chain on, getting your fingers caught, it doesn't come out. Anyway, that's that. External tap. All John Guest fittings here. So they've used some quality fittings. A little bit of a bash plate on it. I don't know. Look, that's okay. If it was if it was a little bit bigger, all encompassing, probably better. Stone mesh guard on the front. This one doesn't have a toolbox. So the toolboxes I've seen, they're happy to work with you and get the right type of toolbox. You can get a thin one, small one, big one, depends what you want to do. I saw one the other day in their factory when we picked this up. It was a bigger one and I thought, oh my God, that's going to be heavy, but it was only like 40 kilos. Mm -hmm. So then it's plus whatever you're putting in it. The ball weight on these is around 250. So single axle, you usually always get the ball a little bit heavier than a dual wheel axle one. So this one overall, I think 2290, tear weight 2290, and uh, it specs up to th three ton. Yeah, so you can load it up to that. So you've got like, what, 700 kilos you can put in. Two water tanks in here, 100 litre and a 70 litre, plus a 70 litre grey water tank. So by the time you filled up that water, 170 litres, you're still going to have 500 odd kilos to load up in this van. And I don't know who's going to bring 500 kilos worth of stuff. So, come around. Me, forward. that would probably be me. Yeah, you see on the side here, nice windows. Now, all of these external hatches and windows and doors are Aussie Traveller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're nice. These are aluminium, right? Aluminium frame, and then they're uh, powder coated. So, that's pretty good. Square in here, they've got multiple rubbers. So, they've got the one at the back's like what you get in your car. Yeah, then they've got a rubber on here which goes hard up against there. And then they've got a rubber on the outside. So when you push that in and you turn it, you feel it just suck right in there. So sure, you get a little bit of stuff, water. Nothing's gone past there into the hatch area. If you have a little look through there, yeah, you can't see much. We'll show you from the other side. But this goes all the way through the van and there's one light down there. Mm -hmm. So I recommend there be another light here. Because that way, you know, if you fill this up with stuff and you're looking in this side in the night time, you'd want to have a light this side too, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Because by the time you fill that out, the light from the other side's not coming in. Well, especially, you know, with the mail looks. I've opened the door, it's not falling out yet. It's not right in front That's of right. me. I can't find it. Us males, we need everything to be instantly available. Right? <laughs> so more lights. Plug in the power here. It's a 15, 15 amper. Right, get the caravan parked. I'm gonna plug a generator in, something like that. This is where you do it. It's got two water tanks. Yep. So there's a 70 litre one and a 100. Mm -hmm. You can either hook them up together or you can have them independent. Mm -hmm. Your choice. In here. Right. Toilet. This is a Dometic one. Nice and easy. Yep. That As looks I say quite before. Big, actually. Yeah, well, it is big. I oh, know, that just looks. Fits a lot of stuff in here. Let's have a little look, mate. See there? Ooh. Now, have a look here. See how there's a little bit of water around here? This mm. comes because, right, you're going to be wetting that area inside with the shower and toilet all in the one place. You'll see that when we go inside. Right, so just be aware of that when you're hosing it down randomly like I was this morning. <laughs> Having a shower and I'm hosing away with the shower. Mm. And uh, you may get a little bit down the toilet, so you've got to be careful. Right. Well, there you go. That's why you're not supposed to do that. Mm. It's the same, yeah. Maybe I should be a bit more careful when I'm doing it. Mm. Now, this monocoque, right? This is 100% aluminium, TIG welded. So, 
you'll see here, right, everything is like precision. And if you haven't been to their website, just go and have a look and see how it is assembled. Um, looks pretty good to me. Lights on the outside. This is a double light as well. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky to get any light at all on this offside, uh, you're laughing. But I'd be asking for a light, whatever caravan you get. Down here, external shower. It's all good. Yep. We've got 16 inch rims. These are Alloy XD series. Mud tyres. Nothing flashy about the mud tyres, they're just mud tyres. Mm -hmm. But what I do like is that there's enough room here. Yeah, here we go, big boy toys. Yeah. I'd be whacking some 35s on here. <laughs> some big mother ass tyres. <laughs> just because it looks good and it goes with the car. Just because it looks good. No functionality, but it looks good. That's and then it. what are you going to do? The Go outside. On, tell, what are you going to do next? You're going to look at your scan gauge and then you're going to complain to me about how much petrol you, or diesel you're using. Doesn't matter. Oh, Sometimes you've got to compromise many, for the good looks. Oh my god. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. No, you do. You say it every all, at least hour. Standard here, they just click, click different levels, whatever you want. Yep. Out here, this is the U Butte. This is the Swift hot water system. Must say, this is yeah. very good. I'm impressed with this. Now, the last Arvok van we reviewed, I said that the shower was better than any other shower in any other caravan. And that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one in here is just as good, but the shower head's different. Yes, yeah, it's not the same shower head. It's not head. the same. It's still good, though. It's more a paddle shower head, which you see yeah. in the video. It's, it's still good, side. but the other one, unreal. I'd be fitting all vans out. I'd have a call back. <laughs> what are they called? A safety recall. A safety recall. Right? Yeah. And I'd be fitting out the u butte shower head that was on that other one, mate. Mm. Anyway, it's in here. It's electric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people say, wow, it uses a lot of electricity. Yeah, well, it's got to crank itself up. Once it cranks itself up, it's a bit like the aircon. You get to the right temperature, and then it shuts down. Yeah. It's insulated, so that temperature will be maintained for maybe 30 minutes mm. or an hour. Then it'll come on again for four or five minutes top it back up so it's not running all the time yeah and you can see if i release this safety valve here right right there's steam coming out of there mate she is red hot it's a beauty it's in a good location really simple and again drum guest fittings red and blue i like it and i like these hatches right aussie traveler they're just good everything sucks in there really high quality hinges one thing that's not here, it's my pet thing, I like a ladder up the back so you can get up on the roof anytime you like to clean off those solar panels. Mm. There's a fair bit of solar happening up here. Could so, you put a ladder on the front, do you think? Like you on top of the toolbox? Oh, you probably do anything. Could scurry like. up there and clean it off rather than having it on the back. Well, I'm just thinking. Maybe you could that's... get yourself up there and clean them off. Yeah, that's probably... <laughs> You need to learn that, I think, mm. just in case. It's called car wash. <laughs> that's where I go, car wash. Right, it's got a rear bar here. Yep, three mounting points to it. Wheels on the back. I'll show you under there in a minute. But the only place on this van, see this, see this back portion. Mm -hmm. We've got the window. You've got the safety camera up there. I think we could also have another light. Talking about lights, I like lights. More lights. Another mm -hmm. light at the back. You know, I don't know. In case you're backing up, I don't want to run you over. <laughs> right. So here. You don't know about that. How these vans are constructed, right? They've got this whole monocoque thing. It's all welded together, all beauty. It's fitted out inside because they've got to get the fridge in mm -hmm. and the bed in and the club lounge, all that kind of the stuff. The cabinetry. They get it all in, fit all that out. And then the last thing, this back, it's like a big hatch and it just suctions in there. All gets glued and bolted in. So the only thing you'd be looking at over time is just to make sure, and this is like bulletproof ceiling. In my view, I've mm -hmm. just got my opinion. Have you seen that? Yeah. That is super dense, okay. thick, whatever it is in there. I don't know what it is. Nice lights on the back. That's all good. So we're going to go around the side now. Go slow for the Again, go nice hatch. <laughs> Easy to close. Yeah. So that works for us. I'd be asking for one of those, you know, bypass plugs that just go in. Somewhere for the Starlink. Yeah. yeah. It's the same on all vans. They're, they're just getting up to speed with people using Starlink. I think one day you'll get a van and already have it on. It'll be mm. fully installed. Or whatever the system is. By then. Starlink will be old in two this years. This is your standard pull-down picnic table. 
which is fine. They're just glued and bolted on. So they're pretty easy. Yeah. I like this. And on this size van, you pretty much only got room for one. Yeah. Whether, whether it could be a bit longer, because I noticed this morning having breakfast, mm -hmm. when I was trying to set everything up, I didn't quite have enough room there. Um, so I had to take it over there, but poor me. <laughs> poor me, poor me. That's good. Marine quality external speakers, they work well. They didn't even vibrate the van while you were having your Taylor Swift music on, whatever yeah. it was. Well, you were listening Seems to, to me because you just quoted one of her um, lyrics right uh, there. What? Poor me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it went into your brain. That works well. No vibration in the side of the van. Big window here. This is good so you can still hand stuff out straight away. That's convenient. Mm -hmm. Tracy gets to look in there from the club lounge and see all the way out down the river. Yeah, I love this. Which this is, is my favourite. It's a good setting. It was good. So you like this club lounge? I love the club lounge. So this is a 16 foot van, right? Yep. 16 foot. And it's got a club lounge in it. Yeah. You can sit up on the same side. Doesn't yep. matter what side of the van you're on. And you can watch the TV here. Sit out. Oh, it says that this light's well, in this side, but anyway. You can watch the TV. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. It's got some mood light. Yep. What about the window at the back? I like the window at the back. Oh, I like the window at the back. Plenty I'd like to see this window be a bit bigger or maybe orientate the other way. I don't know. I think it's sort of just a little small, that one. But I love the club lounge. Up here, there's a hatch. Yeah. Another window. Yeah. That's all good. Aussie traveler door. Now again, see that? Just turn it the wrong way straight away. Yeah. yeah. Other way. These doors that have got all the this way and that way, I, look, you just got to get used to it. Yeah. When, when you close it, right, you think it's closed. But before you lock it up, you just pull up like that and it really sucks it in so that there's no dust or stuff getting through that. there. Now in terms of vents in this van, right, there are no internal vents in the roof. No, okay, at no all. hatches. And that's so that they can get maximum solar on the roof. Mm -hmm. There's a little hatch vent in the toilet area, which yep. is fine. Anything else, any other ventilation you want is going to come from the windows. windows. And there's one external hole, well there's two really, there's one here which is the for the range, the range hood. hood. Doesn't have any dust suppression devices because they think it doesn't need it. I don't see where any dust is going to get in. There's another little vent above the fridge. Yeah. Apart from that, there are no vents. So you should be able to expect, someone did ask us a question about these and having five external vents. I think that might be from the old days yeah, because there's not five external vents now. And even when we reviewed the bigger one, Yep, mm. there weren't there external vents then either. Yeah. So have a look here. So we have a look down here. Now this is pretty much a new van, right? Nothing in it. Okay, and it's got one light switch up here. You just mm -hmm. push that. It's pretty lit up, but you can imagine you've got, you got it stacked full of stuff. Yeah, a light down the other end, that'd be a great it's idea. It's very wide. I think it's wide. It is quite wide. Yeah. Yeah. What you would fit in here, I was wondering myself... Whether the tables would go in, you know, the... Yeah. I was wondering myself... Barbecues. Whether or not you, you even need a toolbox. Now, as a guy, I'm thinking toolbox, that's mm. a great thing. I just don't know. If I thought about it enough and what I needed to carry, I'm not sure I would need that toolbox, because usually they end up with just shoved, stuff shoved in there every day, don't they? Mm. I probably still would have a toolbox. Yeah. Why? Because I think, like, when you go travelling, like, look, we're standing on the mat, that's got to go somewhere, you're going to put it in there, it's going to drop dirt everywhere. Oh. You've got all the hoses, sully hoses that you might pack okay. up and go somewhere. Right. I'd still have a toolbox for you, those kind of things. You went. You made a very good point there. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty stuff you're not going to want to put in good. there. Unless you put something on that rear bar mm. to store that kind of stuff in. Oh, your favourite rear bar of all time. There are products available. But, but anyway. the other thing, still again, no gas bayonet outlet. So if you wanted to put a gas barbecue, not happening, unless you're going to go to the trouble to install it, or you're going to have to go to the new electric Weber barbecue, which I know they have. Not sure how they work. I'm not sure about anything to do with those. But Okay, so it's, it's gasless. But like a lot of vans coming hold on. Yes. Like a lot of vans coming out now, they're all they're all gasless. Yes. Right? And it's about inside the van only having like one sort of you know power source yeah um making sure that you don't need 700 vents when you have a gas installation that's fine inside the van so if, if you, you if you yeah but if you want a gas barbecue you yeah. bring your own little gas bottle 
and your own barbecue. Mm. Okay, so maybe you need a toolbox to do those kinds of things. Yeah. Have it all set up on the outside. Uh, one other little thing in here. Here's that handle I was talking to you about for yep. the awning. For the awning. Yep. So if it fails, you just grab that, wind it down. There's a little power point in here. I'd like to see that a bit closer because mm. these are all like wireless, Bluetooth wireless or whatever yeah, like to the main it. system there. So you can actually stick these on, these power points, mm. wherever you want to put them. Yeah. yeah, there's one conveniently located in there for the external lights. Yeah. The mm -hmm. other van we took, it was all the way over at the power station. But they've already moved them after we... Well, that's, yeah, so they've made some improvements already. Yeah. And that's quite an obvious thing. This one here could come over here so I could activate these external lights. Mm. Have a look. So this external light. Yeah, there's two on the front here. One mm -hmm. here and one over there. So this is to light up the front of the van area. Yeah. Yeah. Now with these, I wouldn't mind seeing them a little, like bit, have a tilt. little bit flexible. So I yeah. could aim them down to where I need them. But in the night time, they are quite light, this front area here. Mm. Yeah. And that's good. There's a bit of a handle here. I don't know what that handle's for, but you could actually climb up there if you were nimble. Climb up there and see what's going on on the roof. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I'll show you the light switch that's been relocated here. That but you might as well turn them on and show them the light. Here it is here. So this was up there, you can see. These are double lights. Ah, good. So they're good, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they and they're nice well. big switches, so they, they're quite easy, like they're not the little switches. Easy to use. Easy to use. I think it doesn't matter how many times you've been in a van, or even when you bought your own van, <clears throat> you get out there and you go, why is this here? Mm. If only it was over there, then you start doing mods. Oh, mods, you love mods. So you can think as carefully as you like. Yeah. Something's not going to be in the right place. That's right. Isn't it? Yes. You're going to go, oh, got to change that, got to change this. Or you'll put it so you think, why did I do that? And then it doesn't quite work. Okay, let's jump underneath this thing. Have a quick look. All right, here's from the back. Yep. So we can see here, grey water tank. And a nice big tap. This has got the ATX suspension, the go fast one. Yeah, doesn't have airbags, but it's the next best thing, mate. Fantastic. I was very interested to see the video of that in action while it was going along. It was like the van was not moving one millimetre and everything was being taken up by the suspension. Yeah. So when you have a proper look under here. Yeah. You can see this floor. So this is the honeycomb floor. Yeah. They've used all John Guess water work and it's covered. It's all nice and neatly tied down all these seals are good it's fully coated under here like it's a galvanized frame and then it's coated with automotive protective coat yeah everything looks nice you got these little white marks here too on the on the nuts so you can quickly identify whether something's moved or come loose when you're doing your maintenance every few days when I say maintenance if you're a caravaner or a camper or anything every day you should have a little look around your van or your caravan because you don't know what's going on with it what's happened overnight what's happened on this track or that track it can be something simple and i tell you what it's worth just spending five minutes having a walk around and a little shake and rattle because uh, you could save yourself thousands of dollars mate if something falls off smashes into your water tank rips your suspension um now, yeah, it's going to be very inconvenient. I call all that. Everything's nice and tidy here. Yeah. It's good. You can see those white marks there again on the frame. Where it's bolted to the chassis. External water point. I'd probably have that a little bit back inside that guard. Just so that it didn't catch itself on a rock. Or a little cover on the brass bit. Yeah. yeah. But when you have a close inspection... Yeah, the silicon of the welding all looks pretty good. Okay, let's quickly sneak under the front where the batteries are. One other thing I do like at the back here, despite the fact it takes a bit of room out, you can see this departure angle of the van. So if you were going through a creek or a river, you'd have no trouble on the back. And it's not too far away from the back wheels to the back of the van. Mm. 
big front water tank. Nice and tidy under here. You can even see up here. Everything is covered. Yeah, and then we've got the batteries up the front. So they're all nicely protected under there. All that cabling. Nice and neat and tidy. Drain pipes. All looking pretty good to me. Okay, we're going to have a quick look inside. See what Tracy's up to. She always up to something inside the van. Let's go. Nice steps. Oh, just on the way in. See this rubber on the front here? Yeah, this Aussie travel. You just got to be careful with that. When you put your foot in, you really got to put it all the way in here from the step. If you keep rubbing your foot on this bit, you see in lots of hands, this will come off. You can just push it back in, but it's sort of a weakness area. And it is on these doors, so it doesn't matter what van it's on. I'd be having some of that in my toolbox, mate. Wouldn't I? Yeah. Sure I got everything in the toolbox. toolbox. Okay, so let's have a look in here. Let's see what Tracy's doing. So you come in, east-west bed, yeah. right? Then we come around here. There's a toilet and a shower together. One so year. that's quite compact. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're sitting up here in your... My What's favourite spot in a club lounge van. Well, why didn't you sleep there last night? I had to sleep there. Well, because you wanted to test it out. That were you, you, you offered. I just went, okay, fine, no problem. It was good. <laughs> so you like this club lounge? I love the club lounge. So this is a 16 foot van, right? Yep. 16 foot. And it's got a club lounge in it. Yeah. Right? With a table. Yep. Now this table's got a locking mechanism. So you can lock it in place. Or it just slides. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Slides. I like that because it's easy to move the table and you can just get in there. If you're, if you're sitting there eating, that's fine. And if you're sitting there with your feet up, you don't want the table yeah. in the road. Right? So that's all okay. And you can do the same thing. You can sit up on the same side. doesn't matter what side of the van you're on. And you can watch the TV here. Sit out. Oh, it says yeah. that this light's in this side, but... You, you know. can watch the TV. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. It's got some mood light. Yeah. What about the window at the back? I like the window at the back. Oh, I like the window at the back. I'd like to see this window be a bit bigger or maybe orientate the other way. I don't know. I think it's just a little small, that one. But I love the club lounge. Yeah. This layout. Or the, yeah. It is good. So we took everything up from there last night, didn't we? Yeah. And there were pillows going everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the wall of pillows. What's going on? And there you are. <laughs> I'm hiding. I'm up the back in the club lounge area. Yeah. Right. Which no one can see. Okay, now there's. there's <laughs> of course, of, you've dismantled it. There's a lot of cushions. What and is pillows. this? Oh, yeah, well, you would do it. It was pillow gate. You couldn't even move. Importantly, where you were though. Standing. The storage space that you have under there mm. is, is quite big. Because it's okay. a big space. Cool. Use some of that flexibility you reckon you've got. Yeah. Ah. Poor viewers. Look here. So, I was thinking there was plenty of space, which there does appear to be. Mm. So, this is uh, just on one side. And then have a look at this big, big space here. That's right at the back of the van. Yeah. yeah. And see here. Yeah, actually, look at this. See here. Okay, yeah, this is the hot water unit. Oh, you found it. She's a beauty. Where's what the switch? Well, it's plugged into the power, that's good. So. And it's on. 240? No, no, well, that it's bit's it. on. It's that on. bit's on. But down here, there's a switch. Mm. So you got to make sure you crank that on. Okay. okay. I'd you like found to. It. I wouldn't mind seeing the control for the hot water unit. Like. In a more accessible spot. Like somewhere up. Accessible. Well, that's accessible. It's just. Like, it's not accessible. Look at the pillows. I can't even get in there. There's like five no, pillows here. No, that's no, not no, accessible. No, no, no. Once you sit on the pillows, you just reach down. Like those vans, like all of them have got little power points under the table area and that. Okay, well, it's which not is which is which is always a drama. But you know, if you have a look up here at the power display unit and all the switches up there, maybe there should just be another one. Hot water. I don't know. Anyway, who knows? But I would like to see that up here. But here's where the unit is, and what I was looking for was the extra storage space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, obviously, you wouldn't be putting things in here that you want to refer to every day because look at our pillows. The wall of pillows. The wall of pillows. The wall of pillows. It's like a trampoline. The great here. wall of pillows, mate. Yeah. Anyway, I am pretty impressed with the storage space. And where I'm sitting now is exactly the same as over the other side. And you see all these piano hinges. Some people love them and some people don't. But what I can say is that 
If you assemble these properly and put them in, everything, like all of these up here too, right? They've got piano hinges and you just screw them on and they're perfectly aligned if you do a good job when yep. you're first installing them. If you've ever go adjusting those adjustable ones in your van before, <laughs> good luck, you'll know that you screw it one way a little bit. Next yeah. thing, yeah. you're spending four hours trying to line up all the cupboards so they're beautiful. So the piano hinges, fine. I don't, I don't mind them at all. Mm. Yeah, what's going on up here? Oh yeah. Mood nice. lighting. Nice little mood lights. Warm lights. 12 volt, two USB ports here. They're putting in the USB-C ones now as well, so that's a good thing. And I love the rear window. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're getting carried away because all I wanted to show you here is what's underneath. And my favourite thing is, look, you can stick these. You need the big one first, that's, that's this one. I don't know what I need. Let's mm. see. You can stick these, see how they all come with Velcro? You peel this off and then you Velcro them to the wall so they don't move. However, I always recommend that you don't do that because then they're super hard. You want to move them or whatever. Maybe you don't have to move them. You, you decide, right? Whatever. Yeah. So I'm going to put these around. Watch out. They're like a leatherette. Mm -hmm. but, you know, the construction of these and the stitching seems pretty good to me. I'm going to get myself trapped in here. Yeah, really. Oh, don't have to do one of those maneuvers. <laughs> oh, one of your 700 pillows, is it? Yeah, it's one of your 700 oh. pillows because why are we going to. We bought our own TV, but it doesn't fit. Well, why doesn't it fit? Well, because we'll talk about that tomorrow. Mm, okay, okay. Well, it doesn't fit at this stage. I need to look at it. Pretty good. We've cranked on the uh, hot water, so that's great. Got the little switches here, so there's a blue one. A little blue one for when it's dark. I like that mood lighting. Now, we're completely off grid here. Mm -hmm. Not plugged into anything. Starlink cranking, fridge cranking. All Arvo, this is so far. Mm -hmm. Still on 100%. So, later if it gets cold, but this van is quite warm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like spring, winter, springtime. Well, it's, it's a bit Indian summer. But, yeah. Yeah, anyway, so it's not cold. But in the van, it's really nice and toasty already. And we haven't got any heating. No. Yeah. I'd be yeah. asleep in, I reckon, five minutes. You would be. This is so nice. And we've got views out the back. Mm hmm. 16 foot van, see? With a club lounge. Um, yeah. So far, I'm liking it. So we'll see what happens. We're going to do something special. We're going to sleep. Well, I am, maybe. Well, one of us is. One of us is going to sleep up this end. You know how they always say, oh, you can push the table down and. That can be an extra bed, but well, we're going to find out. Mm. So we slept on here last night. Have a look, All right? Just see if you can you know, have a look from back there, so you can get a wider view. Okay. Yeah. So we had a look in here. Slept in here. Now, <clears throat> I found that when I put this down last night, I put it all the way down. You know, thinking it had to be all the way down, but it's like on this little adjustable leg. So when I was sleeping on it, I was a bit down here in this area, so I kept rolling into this area. But I've just discovered when I'm packing up that I could have had it perfectly level. So this is a bonus. Okay. A lot of ants we've been in before. It's, it's got to be all the way down to lock in. And then you're relying on the, the foam being exactly the right height, which most of the time that's not. So this one here, that would be a little bit more comfortable now. It was quite good to sleep on. Plenty of room, yeah, it's long, so, anyway, trick for young players, right? Yeah, these TV brackets, right, this one here, see how it's not that far from the top there? Mm. So, if you've got a bigger TV and you want to mount it here, you're going to have a problem. So, I think if this was down a little bit further, it would be very helpful for those that want the big 30 inch yeah. TV or even a 26 inch but I'm not sure there we haven't got a TV to try it because I forgot the screws from our TV what they're not in your spare they're parts not. box no they're not well it's got everything else in it so your spare parts box obviously is not very good anyway so that's good you can take this out take it to the outdoor outdoor yeah. entertainment you? that's all good stuff 
Right. So the what, other what, thing about the two video, that that bracket, while we're on the bracket, is yep. there's just one here, but there's no one, there's not another bracket down near the bed. Oh, okay. So if you're watching the TV you're in the bed. You're only limited to here. So we're just looking at that TV area now. Mm. You're right. Like if you're down here in the club lounge and you're watching the TV, that's all good. If, you, if you go to bed and want to watch TV. Yeah. You that's can't see, because uh, it's like a nook, yeah. there's no way you'd see that TV there, unless right. you were laying this way. So if you're a TV watcher, you might want to get another TV bracket, bracket put on down there somewhere where you can mount it. Is if that you what want to watch saying? TV in bed, yeah. So I guess that's something to think about if you're ordering one of these fans and specking it up, because mm. they are quite um, user-friendly and, and want to be helpful when it comes to these little modifications. And the you best thing about have. this lounge, this layout, on this site, is you sit here, you haven't quite got the caravan orientated properly, I do have to complain about that, that's on, on you Mr. Park Caravan, but you can sit here and you just look straight up the river. Mm -hmm. Straight out, see the view. Yeah. It's not a bad view there, is it? It's beautiful and it works best in these rear club lounge. Right. Every rear club lounge van we've had mm -hmm. here, and I, a couple of times I've had to work from the van, you just sit here, look straight up the river, it's just perfect. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you can sit here, put your feet up, both people can do it. So sometimes one side is longer than the other yeah. in some of the vans, but this one, both sides are Good. equally are equal, and they've got the same cupboards on either side. These are your cupboards. Open all those cupboards. You can't open them. You won't be able to open the end ones. So this is here. We've got two, both the same. They're pretty big, aren't they? So you get rid of those. And then you go three at the back. Okay. So that's about uh, yeah. 30 centimetres or more, maybe 40. Probably 30. Yeah. Yeah. Flat, then it's ridged on this side. Anyway. anyway and this then you've side. got them all along this side too. So there's, there's five here. So there's three over here. This this one's still usable. Yeah, that's a big one. And if you look at all this wiring and cable work, it's all really neat and tidy. That's one thing I did notice in this van. Yeah. And you've got three on this side. And then you've got another two up there. Yeah. Oh, it does go this way. Look. Yeah. You said so it. forward and back. Yeah. So that is good. So this table goes sideways, yeah. backwards, yeah, up and down. So yeah. you can have it at different heights. That's one thing. You just push down on that a little bit. No, you've got to hold the latch. Oh, you hold the latch and just push it down. Style. Yeah. yeah. So if you want the table lower, you can have it at all different settings, yeah. can't you? Which is something unique to this van. A lot of them you, you're either all the way up or you're pushing it all the way down. So that is quite good. And you can reach it from the back of the table too, the mm, latch. That's so good. The latch is here. Does it spin it's... around? No, no. Well, you've got to do it on everything else. So it must go in one place and then you can move it. Like you were, you were moving it this way and that way, but it doesn't go around. No. That you know of. Okay. <coughs> Righto, so that is quite convenient. Lots of storage under there. And it's sort of got a little step up yep. area there too, hasn't it? You got you got your three cabinets over here. Well there's three there and there's another two down here. Yeah. So these are everywhere. That one that one's got the range hood in it, so it's a little yeah. short one, but But you have a look, there's plenty of um, USB ports and twelve volt sockets. What's that switch? Is that for that, yeah. the range hood? This is probably a booster for the for something. I don't know what that is, but it could be a booster for the TV antenna because they've got to be powered usually by the 12 volt. So there's a socket up there. And they're putting USBs and USB-C in now. Mm -hmm. So if you're ordering a van, any van, just make sure you're getting the right connection so that you can use it. This is a couple's van, and there are two other cupboards here, aren't they? There's two cupboards. These are right. the same dimensions. They're exactly the same cupboard. Okay. So they're quite deep. Yeah, you've got the wheel arch down there. Covered in this nice felty stuff. I still haven't got to the bottom of what that's about, but it, I guess it's a bit of a deadening thing. Things don't bash around on there, get injured. Mm -hmm. That's all good. So you got that on that side. Another one over Another here. Another one over here, which is there. We just got the rubbish. So tell us about the cooking area. So, well, it's compact. Another bit for small. Uh, it is compact. Um, obviously, the induction, you can yeah. put a cutting board over it. So, so you used that last yeah. night. What happened? It worked really well, actually. Cooked potatoes faster than I've ever seen. Yeah. I've got new induction cookware because <laughs> I've been just going along with the old ones that we've got at home. So I did 
splash out and got a new set so maybe that was the set and the combination with this but it worked really well cooked really quickly didn't you know boil away madly it was good this i think is set back a little bit too far like you're reaching in and over would like to see it centered but again that might be a reason so they can push the pipes back you're pretty so tall though space. yeah i know but you are reaching so, so you if you were shorter yeah. you'd be reaching further yeah i'm reaching over. i don't know and it does still splash back like yeah. most of them do i think that's I a caravan think thing, thing where the kitchen is what it hasn't done do? that but it's got draw four drawers all the same so four big drawers down there yep yep and that's just good. okay it's all closed i'll have a look this one Two here, big ones. they're not separate. So if you've got something extra wide or high, you can get them in here. And because of the combined shower and toilet, like you'll see in a minute, there's no cupboard. This is where we've stored the towels and that. Oh, okay, for... opposite the shower. Opposite so the one. shower. But I've just put them there, there's nothing yeah. else there. Okay. I'd... Piano hinges. Yeah. There's piano hinges everywhere in this van now. Yeah. Trend. These, these uh, look like they're all stainless steel, which is a good thing, because yeah. sometimes they can rust over time. But one good thing though. Anyway, good. Now, hold on, hold on, something else. These latches, these latches, they, they suit this van quite nicely, actually, yeah, they contrasting. Do. But if you want latches like the under, yeah. under counter ones, yeah. um, you can talk to them about getting those. But yeah. look, I think they're quite nice. There's a couple of things about this. One, we find the PowerPoint coffee machine. All right. And it's sitting right there. Just PowerPoint hit it in where a you spot. need them. Yeah, that's the Good. coffee machine. Yep. The other thing that we found, I've got this other three thing over here. This is the only van where this has sat exactly perfect spot. Every other time it's half in, half out. The You're window. a bit of a fan of that. Well, it's just sitting there. We like it, but anyway, it just sits there and it just has a spot. And it's perfectly flush against the wall. It's not in your way, like not resting on half the sink and the windowsill. It's flush. You could stick it down with some double velcro or remove or whatever you want to do. But yeah, I just find that it's recessed a little further back. But that's probably just so that it's more the cupboard's more functional. The pipes are out of the way at the back of the thing. Yeah. And I'd say that's all it is. So about the sink. The sink's a bit small. It's a bit small. I think it's only a couple's van. We've got to remember that. So right? it's a couple's van. It's got like the little one. The sink that was in the other harbour was better. The drain hole was bigger and it had that basket in it, which I actually like. That's my personal preference. I find the water does not drain out. It sits. It takes a long time to, to it takes push out. takes longer to go down the drain yeah. to the grey water tank. Yeah. Okay. So, that's... so I, I think it's got to be the size of the drain hole. Yeah. So you like hole. to see a bigger one? Yeah, the one with the basket. Just put the one yeah. with the basket in here. Yeah. So there's an LED light under there. Yeah, and there's a range hood as well. Another light. You know what I like? Hold on. There's not LED lights all the way around the caravan. Oh, yeah, that'd be yeah. Good. I'm sort of getting a bit anti-LED lights after having to fix my own ones. If you haven't so, seen yeah. that video, check it out. But these have got the this LED lights in the roof. This yeah, hold on, hold on. The LED lights are in the roof here. Mm -hmm. So they're quite nice. You can turn, you know, you can turn that end on and this end on and that end off. And there's an extra bright light under here. This fluoro. Yeah. It's not fluoro, it's, it's LED. LED. It's LED right? And this is an, there's another one or two strips on the side of this. Another light on, on I the think. Ranger thing. Okay. Ranger. And there are blue lights on the air conditioning when you crank that on. Yeah. That all looks spiffy. So over here you have your pretty standard stuff. Yeah. A long cupboard. It's a very long cupboard. That's things are going to get mm. lost up there. Get some baskets. Yeah. Now there's a vent up here too with a switch on and off. Now I don't know whether that's connected actually to anything in particular. Or what it is. If I find that out, I'll strip it in the bottom. If not, you're interested in this man, ask the question. And what sort of fridge have we got? Dometic? We have a Dometic fridge. This is exactly the same as the one that was in the other van. Oh. Same size, same dimensions. Yep. I'd probably like it a little bit higher off the ground, yeah. but that's just me, so you don't have to bend down. But other than that, that's just a fridge. Yeah. And the freezer is the same. Okay. And it works well because we put stuff in there to see if it works. So this is a compressor fridge? Yeah. It's all fine. We have a microwave. Now this has a turntable in it. Yep. The other one didn't. But it's a standard one, works well. You use that. Good. We have the fusion sound system. Because yeah, you've do. got your one there, yeah. one there, two outside. You were getting two speakers inside, two outside. outside. You can change the zones, all the kind. That's all standard, these fusion yeah. ones. Yep. Everything's up here. Have a look at this. I don't know whether you can see that. You see that? That tells you how much power you've got. <clears throat> so We've been here cranking everything, 
and we've got it down to 45% remaining. But there's power coming in now with the solar and the mm. sun going. So well, we'll the clouds have burnt off, so we've yeah. finally got full sun. We've got switches up here, water tank gauges, grey water tank gauge. This is your big power system. So that's all fine. Let's have a little push here. So on these 48 volt systems, right, what, what is actually happening, so it's pulling 6.4 amps now, right, so if that was a 12 volt system, mm. that would be 4 times 6 amps it would be pulling, uh, yeah. right, well, 6 is 24, because 48 volts is like, you know, 3 to 4 times more efficient, Okay. isn't it? Yeah, I, you say so, yeah. I just like the idea that there's always power. I don't really care what it does as long yeah. as it works. The power is pretty good in here, isn't it? Yeah. Everything is electric. There's no gas anywhere. No. Now, let's talk about heating. If you're going to buy this van, you might want to get a diesel heater put yeah. in, right? Having said that, though, last night it was probably only got down to 7 or 8 degrees, right? It's not overly cold. But when we got in the van yesterday, Arvo, you closed the windows down. It was quite warm in here. And actually, last night I heard you opening another window down here. Yeah, I opened the window just to get air into the van. So you wanted to get some air in? Just to circulate some air, because we had all the windows shut. Yeah. And I think the only vent we had open was the one in the bathroom. Yeah. So I just opened that one up. Yeah. Just to get, just that much. Okay. To get some air. But it wasn't cold in here at all. It was warm in here. You had no need for heating. You had no need to run around going, oh, I need to have five jumpers mm -hmm. on. So it's wholly, it's aluminium, yeah. and the insulation, it's like this spray foam stuff, right, mm. that they put all over it before they put the interior lining on it, yeah, mm. which seems to work fine, I don't know. Yeah. It was way warmer than uh, some of the other bands we've, we've taken out at times, Yeah. you know, the stick and tin ones, or aluminium frame and tin, or it's steel, I don't know, whatever, but <clears throat> this one here felt pretty good to me. Yeah. So what else have we got to look at inside? Okay, well, we've got the combined shower and toilet. So this is where it goes really hybrid, because this is exactly what you would get in a hybrid. So, so what's in there? Combined shower and toilet. We have a vent. That goes two ways too, that fan. Yeah, air, suck air in, in suck air out. out. Has a light, one light. Yeah. We have a toilet. So the toilet too. What about the, see how it, it spins around? Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, isn't it? A lot of people yeah. think in these vans, just because the lid's lined up that way, you've got to sit on it and jam yourself in there, but you don't. You just turn the top section of it this way, and mm -hmm. then you can sit there with plenty of room. Yeah, so we have a Dometic toilet. We have a little basin, but it has, like, no cupboard. There's two drains. One there, yeah. and then one down there. Yeah. No cupboard, and no mirror. Oh. There's no mirror in this van. Okay. So the one thing that's not here... That's in every other van, and I'm sure they could Some put a mirror in. Some type of mirror, somewhere. Some type of mirror. So that's why you were walking around looking at yourself in the phone. Yeah, phone okay. mirror. Good. But yes, it's um. So a little mirror in there somewhere on one of the walls. Surely that could be done. Well, we did have showers in here. Look, I find that where this is, where the sh like it's hard to get in here around the toilet. So you've got to adjust the shower head and. You've got to work that it's pretty out. pretty adjustable, but again, look. It's this, Tetris shower. Yeah. If you didn't have this toilet and shower combined, mm. I'm sure you wouldn't have a big club lounge. Yeah. Right? No, you couldn't have Because how else are you going to fit all this not, into not a 16-foot in, van? Not in, this, not in this layout. And when I was in there, two things, right? One is, when you're having a shower, you can easily use the shower, spray down all the walls, spray down the toilet lid, toilet, whatever. I felt it was easy to clean and wash out. Mm -hmm. It's just like one of those... 79 series from the old days, you know, had vinyl floors. You just get the hose yeah. in there and hose it out, mate. Yeah, your favourite. It was like that. One thing I would like to see is I'm a real fan of the all-in-one unit, shower unit. unit. Without any, yeah, because there's a lot of... Like the module. So you can see it's got silicon all the way around the bottom, the bottom. up the side walls on the roof. Mm -hmm. Now, the side walls and roof aren't really a big deal, but down the bottom there... And in the bottom of these, they're a little bit flexible, so they move up and down. Yeah, it feels really spongy. It's yeah, and I, a lot of them are like that. A lot of them have stuff that goes underneath underneath there, some foam or rubber or whatever. But when it moves, and it, not, it doesn't move a lot, this one, but I think over time, you're going to be looking at making sure that silicon is U-butte around the bottom. Or it, you go to a whole unit. Yeah, 
Uh, but I do like that whole unit. So if it had a whole unit, I'd be loving on it. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas now, I think it's quite practical. Yeah. Even even though it's shower and toilet in one, yeah. it does work. Well, it works for me anyway. Yeah. And as always, you've got to come out in the smaller vans. Absolutely. Your dressing area is in the kitchen. It's, it's right here. Isn't it? Here's the spot. Is you had I suppose a mat here, and this yeah. is where you, you this is the space where you're going to. So you get getting dressed in front of anyone. Anyway. Mm. Well, well, you're not in like. Despite the fact we're at a caravan park. Yeah. We're not on power and we're in our U Butte site. This is agreements on the Hawkesbury. Yeah. yeah. It's just a beautiful ask for the caravans by the campfire site. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They'll put yeah, you so. right here. It's just good. Nice little view. Protected from those southerly winds that sometimes mm -hmm. come up the river. Yeah. And you get a little bit of shade here too, but not too much shade because you need that for your solar. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. So what else is in here? Anything else to talk about? Air conditioner, all the standard stuff. It's 16 foot. I think they've done well to get everything in it. We need to go down and have a look at this bed down the end. So you saw where I was sleeping, yeah. right, on the club lounge, which I think is good. Down this end here, there's no doubt about it that we're both like, I'm over six foot and you're like nearly at six foot, right? Yeah. This length of bed from there all the way down to here, your feet are hanging out. Yep. So if you're like, you know, if you're five, seven, five, eight, yeah. perfect. Oh, yeah, small yeah. hiker. Yeah. Or you're into hiking and you trim tall and terrific. Well, not tall. You're trim. just trim and terrific, right? Yep. If you're looking for a little bit of extra bedroom, one option they do have is to remove this cupboard here at the side. Mm -hmm. So that gives you the same, if not more, space than the club lounge does down the other end. Yeah. Because there's no cushions on the end, right? Yeah. So I think if that wasn't there, we might be okay. However, mm -hmm. the width of it is another is yeah. another thing. This is definitely a double bed because this is queen size bedding that we've got on here and it's hanging off everywhere. So yeah. it's definitely a double bed. Yeah. And I found last night, like, because you slept down there, I slept diagonally because my feet ended up going in, in the hole. In the hole. Yeah. So, and I definitely know that if you and I were both sleeping in here, I would have been freezing. Yeah. Well, uh, it's freezing and squashed. So it's got, it's got the courtesy lights and the USB ports. Yeah. Yeah. Also down in here, it's got a power point. Yeah, more 12 volt connections there. Yeah, it's got one of these little pouches which are very convenient. It's I'd probably have that on the side another, down where your head is. There's another little pouch down here too. Yeah. And that, I, I agree, that, that yeah. size pouch down there yeah. needs to be up either there or one over there or something. But look, you know, you can, what, you can do that, you can get things. a bigger one. There's there. one above the door as well there, behind. Yeah, yeah that, put, that, there there, that one there needs to be over there. Yeah. But. Just say so you got somewhere else because you get in bed and then it's like, oh, where do I put my phone? Yeah. Well, you've oh, got okay. these overhead right. cabinets. So this is where I come back into the hybrid world because I'll show you. This. See this? This is how big this is. So it goes in there. That's it. Yeah. That's about all you're fitting in there. So this is like, as you said, like very limited storage down this end of the van. You have 11 other cupboards in the kitchen. Yeah, right? I know. So you get, you have to move. You either have like small clothes, like you said, under socks, swimmers, or little stuff. Your bulkier items are going to have to come down into here, close. Right. So one of those cupboards, either side of where you're standing, is probably going to have to be clothes storage yeah. rather than food. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to have to think about what you do in here. Mm -hmm. But you're getting this because you want something smaller, not a big caravan. But you want a big caravan feel. Yeah. without the big caravan. I tell you what, the 16 foot van, the single axle behind the car was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine, it sort of reminded me of how good they they were. Um, and when they're behind the car, you're coming down that dirt road, easily maneuverable. This is a long way off the ground, which you've already seen. So you could nearly take it anywhere. So we're going to have a look. You've got the standard, how do all just electrical this? stuff down here, all the, all the powers, what safety switches, that kind of thing. Just lift that bed up first. On the bed. Right, you got the bed up now. Yep. So in here is the 48 volt power system. Yeah, that's the brain box. Includes a 3000 watt inverter. It includes all your DC to DC chargers, AC to DC. Yeah, your solar regulators, all that kind of stuff here. And you get a full array here of fuses, circuit breakers, circuit protection. Yeah. It's got little smart switches in here too, which control your light switches. 
Yeah, and down here. Just got all your circuit breakers there. Yeah, all your safety switches. So if anything goes wrong, you're gonna know straight away. Yeah, and then the batteries are underneath the frame. Yeah, but that's a pretty good system, I think. 48 volt, you know that's my favorite, don't you? Yes. I don't know why more caravan manufacturers don't have it. Because underneath here, it's a 10,000 watt system, right? Uh, 10,000 kilowatt system. Mm -hmm. So underneath here, in effect, is only 200 amp hours of lithium battery. Yeah. Right, and how that converts to a 12 volt system, you would have 800 amp hours of lithium battery in there to achieve the same result. The 12 volt yes. takes way more draw than what this 48 volt does. So it's a lot more efficient, a lot less cables running around, the thickness of the cables are um, a lot less. And I think that's good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So to have everything on that we were doing, right, and looking up here, so we're getting charge in now, right, looking up here, we've used 50% of the battery. Yeah. Yeah. So we've used 100 amp hours of lithium to do everything that if we were in our van, here's the comparison, right? We would have used 400 amp hours of battery. We would be out of battery. I, you believe that? No. We would be out of battery to do everything we've been doing. Everything electric on, everything's been on all the time. Electric hot water, bloody Starlink, charging everything, lights on, induction, cooking, you name it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd be sitting here now going, oh geez, we better run over and plug it in. <laughs> yeah, so that's how efficient it is. So if you were off grid, it'd have to be a bargain, mate. Mm. So again, I don't know why all vans aren't going this way. Well, maybe they are. Yeah. They're just dragging the chain. Maybe they're taking too slow, mate. Too slow. You know, by the time they catch up, there'll be some other system. Mm. Yeah, but the forty-eight volt one. There's a number of really big brand name vans that yeah. are, you know, like a Kimberley, for instance. Yeah. They're way ahead of the game, mate. They've been doing this for a couple of years. Yep, so jump on it. It's no more expensive. If anything, it's cheaper. Right. Okay, so that's good. Well done. Let's get out there and you can tell me what you think of this. What you think of this van. What do you reckon? You've stayed in it. What's your initial reaction straight away? My initial reaction was it was a cross between a caravan and a hybrid caravan. Right. And what makes you think that? Well, because one half of the van is caravan club lounge kitchen. The other half is the all-in-one shower toilet and east-west bed hybrid. Right, okay. So down one end, you feel it's like a caravan. Yep. And down the other end, it's much more compact. Yes, it's more like a hybrid. East-west bed. Really gives me that vibe. And it does have a shower and toilet combined. Mm. So I guess that gives you that kind of feeling. Yes, and the Club Lounge does provide you with storage cabinetry all the way around it, yeah. which is a bonus in this layout, an absolute bonus. There's a lot of storage in there. Yeah. I think 11 overhead cupboards, Yeah. not including the three that are over the bed area, which are yeah. quite small. But yes. you, if you were traveling all the time, there are two versions of this, right? The, the couple's van, yep. which has the Club Lounge that you can lay down the, the table and sleep on mm -hmm. plus there's a family version where you only get half a club lounge yeah, and you get and you get two single kids beds yeah. that are quite small but if you had young ones yeah probably be okay yeah, yeah. they probably would be if they were like three and yeah. five maybe. but we're very much about what it feels Beautiful. like and we like to review brands rather than individual specific caravans yeah mm. because they're all got the same type of inclusions yeah, it comes down to how's it fitted out, what the technology's like, what's the after sale service like, do they seem like a nice company to deal with, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Okay, so when we first went into this van, talking about feelings and reaction, you were talking about this club lounge like it was some godchild. Well, that's because it's really functional. Yeah. I really like it and it, it does give like you the space lounge. to relax inside rather than being crammed in inside. Yeah. Rather than being the lounge room or the mm. dining room is an afterthought. I think you're just right. Fit there. It here. Reflecting back on all the vans we've reviewed, mm. the couple that have had a club lounge, it does feel like a different experience. Yeah, it just does give you that sense of space and it gives you that sense of mm. there's a separate lounge, dining, kitchen, bedroom. There's a separate area. 
you can separate the two. So someone can be down mm. there, you know, you might be working, Pretty someone good. else can go to bed. It's not going to interfere with them. And even though this is all in one space, like there's no wall, yeah. there is a bit of a nook because of where the combined shower toilet is. So if you, mm. you're sleeping that way, you, mm. you're not really going to have direct light, you mm. know, in mm. your eyes. So single axle, right? The thing that struck me is being a single axle band, they do pivot and turn a lot quicker than a dual axle one, right? You're not dragging the wheels around on these sharp turns. And if you want an off-road experience, you want to be able to have a van that's manoeuvrable. Well, yes. So that's what I like. And when we were towing it, it's got the ATX Cruise Master suspension. No airbags, but mm. it's got the Rolls-Royce suspension. I would add airbags. Top of the range, but no airbags. Mm -hmm. And towing it along, it was like, you usually get that little feeling yeah. with a single axle, it moves around well, a little bit. it bounces bit. a little bit. This was going nowhere. Yeah. And so I put that down really to the suspension that's underneath it more so than the van itself yeah. but the van must be fairly stable you know in terms yeah. of distribution of weight go on that suspension system and cruise along the road so i'd love to take it off road somewhere serious like through a river yeah through a creek or something like that down well, a few I'm national than a 1k dirt road yeah, down a few <laughs> national park trails when you come yeah. down here there's you know there's a couple of sharp hairpins it's dirt mm. but you're not going to get in strut right you can bring yeah. any caravan down there i'd bring a 30 foot caravan down there Right. That's a bit big. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But the point is, That's so you went big. in there, you were struck straight away by the club lounge. Yeah, I did like that. I thought it was a really good mm. use of good. space. It was really functional and it provided you with extra overhead storage, which you absolutely need in this size van. There's well, no doubt. So apart from that, what did you think was impressive? Impressive? The club lounge. <laughs> What, what it's, just, it's just, I like the fact that in a small single axle van, you could have that in there. Right. What about your cooking experience? Oh, that was good. That was, so, that induction was good. Was good. It was induction cooktop and it worked really well. We've upgraded the pans, so now we've got real She's ones. She's got herself some cook. new pans, right? <laughs> I'm testing them out. I don't know whether they're the right ones. I just sort of... Yeah, I'm not sure it's the pan. But the, no, the I thought it worked. The quality of the pan mm. must lend itself to a better product using the induction. Well, now, I don't know any work, of that. They go together. That's just like my personal view. Yeah. So you've got these new pans, you've whacked them on there. Yeah. And I think too, those potatoes cook really quick. I was hurrying around, rushing around to do the barbecue. Yeah, you were. Not that we got a barbecue here, there's no, no gas. No, you were cooking on the We were cooking on, on the, the open fire. fire. And I thought, wow, I better get cracking on those steaks. Yes. Right? And the carrots or whatever else it was. But yeah. I think the fact that induction, the water boiled like, within Instant. moments yeah it did and therefore the potatoes start cooking as yep. opposed to waiting 10 minutes for the water to heat up yeah then it starts cooking using your precious gas so i think that must have been the difference but yeah. it happened really quickly it did. so that looks good so you got about 700 kilos now this has the upgraded suspension this one yeah that atx stuff um which gives you about another 100 150 kilos of, of weight that you can put in it yeah um those weights too interestingly you say hybrids very similar, yeah. Yes. In those hybrids are floating around out there. They're all two ton, just over two ton. There's some other versions that are under it and you've got a bigger payload, but to have say 700 kilos, yep. put the water in, you've still got 500 plus kilos to muck around yep. with. So it doesn't have a toolbox on the front. You want to whack one of those on, 40 kilos. You fill it up with stuff, maybe another 50 kilos. You've, yep. still, got, you've still got around 400 kilos that you can be playing with inside that yeah. van. So you got to be, think about what, you, what you're putting in there. 400 kilos a lot, mate. If you saw our weight video, we got everything out of the back of that car there, everything, and it only come to 100 and something kilos. Yes, I know. So I'm thinking 400 kilos of stuff is a lot. It's a lot. But if you, you're smart about it, like you might not, you don't want to have heavy plates or heavy cups and you know, saucepans no. and things sure. like that. So you've got to have things that are multifunctional. Okay, we asked for some comments about this brand of van mm -hmm. so that we could answer them doing this review. This comes from our previous review. A couple of them were, right, to do with the aluminium construction of the window frames, the Aussie Travellers. They're yeah. all aluminium on the outside, right? They're plastic on the inside, aluminium on the outside and uh, they're powder coated so that answers that one yep right we've got a fair few other ones here actually yep. and remembering we do these reviews so that you guys can get some information before you part with your hard-earned money if you're looking at these vans here they have vans from 85 to 120,000. 
Yeah. Right. Now, this van here is around about that $90,000 mark. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. When you consider everything that's in it, you've just got to compare this to any other van that you've been looking at. I love the 48 volt power system, and that's why you use a quarter of the amp hours that you'd normally use. So everyone's trying to upgrade to 800, 800 amp hours of lithium. You don't really need to do that if you've got a 48 volt system. 200 amp hours will do the same job. So that's mm -hmm. a good thing. That's what we got here. People are a little bit concerned about, you know, it, it is a new brand. Mm -hmm. How's it going to go over time on the corrugations and the, in the desert, that kind of thing? Yeah. I haven't heard of anyone having a problem so far. Mm -hmm. Like the TIG welded aluminium construction. Well, you never know. Maybe we can get one and get it out to some corrugations. Maybe they have. We'd probably love to take this on a, on a big trip. Well, along with, then you, yeah. Then you'd get a real idea. Of how it's really going to go. So some of these vans we take for one week, two weeks, or three days. Three days. Right? So you don't quite get the true feeling of what it's like. We'll People have asked questions too about payloads, that kind of thing. Yeah. The average caravan has got four or five hundred kilos payload. Yeah. Right? You'll get the special ones that have tricked up suspension. You might get seven or eight hundred, maybe even a ton. Yeah. Yeah. So this is fitting into the normal category. Yeah. This particular one here, 2290, and uh, maxes out at three tonne. So that's yeah. 700 kilos. Yeah. Whack your water in, roughly a kilo a litre. Yeah. Roughly, if you're at uh, minus 0.4 degrees Celsius or whatever. <laughs> it's so close that it doesn't matter. So one kilo yeah. equals one litre. It's just work that way. It's, right? it's just easy math. Work it out that way. You've still got 600 <laughs> left. girl math. 500 left. Girls maths, is it? Girl math with water. It's good. How many, if I you're going to spend that maths. amount of money on a, on a, a outfit, how many times do you wear it divided by how much times, how much it costs? And that's girl math. Now, I love the... So um, we can have caravan math. How about that? Caravan math. Caravan math. How you're going to spend how much money and how okay. many times are you going to use this van? Let's divide through these that comments. up. Now, the external lights, they are amber and white. Just got to push the button a couple of times mm. and you can change between white and amber. So that's a good thing. I think any caravan that's just got white lights on the outside is from the Stone Age. Yeah. Yeah. What else we got here? We love the shower head before. We've already commented. Yep. This is not the shower head we love. No, this is not. a good shower head, mm. but it's not the one we love. So when I find this out, I'm going to let you know. You can all have it in your own vans. But the hot water system I might set up my van. own shower shed. Hold on. I might set up my own shower head, the ultimate shower head, and sell it. Okay, what whatever. do you reckon? We don't, no, no, that's not? what people that make them, not us. Well, We're maybe not doing that. People out there, we want to make sure that they get access to the best thing. Okay, well, yeah. But I can say the hot I'm water. I'm going to find it out. Okay. What about the hot water? I was going to say how good it was. It is good, again, two times in a row. Mm. It's the Swift hot water system. It is electric, it seems to work. It doesn't suck the life out of your power. Obviously, like air conditioning, when it first comes on, it's putting a lot of energy into heating up that water. Yeah. Once it gets to temperature, it just tops it up now and again. Okay, so because you have no hair and I have probably been into long hair, I'll talk about the shower. That's You're my, not qualified that's to talk my choice. about it. Okay? I don't want to waste so, my time. For instance, shower today. Be able to wash, condition, comb out, shower without turning the shower off once never ran out of hot water amazing Good. i waited. have not been able to do that in many other vans without going stone cold and going shit i waited 10 minutes and then i had a shower yeah and i too washed my hair you don't have any hair <laughs> look in the mirror oh it doesn't have one sorry <laughs> what mirror yeah that's right i don't <laughs> well, want to scare myself that, that is something i can say without a doubt hands down is just here's another question life changing interior wise all the cupboards in that are timber yeah. Yep. So they're not aluminium. There's a couple of other brands out there that are having aluminium frames on the inside. Yeah. And then like a timber or composite door. Yeah. So maybe that's something they'll look into later on. I think that's a weight consideration but really. It doesn't, it doesn't have them, right? I wasn't wearing a life jacket. I'm wearing a vest. Someone thought I was wearing a life jacket. We, I'm wearing a t-shirt and you've got long sleeves on the life jacket. Usually it's vice versa. I can't believe it. That's because I've been cleaning the van. Yeah. It's hot. Hard work. And look, a few people out there say, look, it's it's a van, it's imported, it's from overseas. Yeah. It's the quality of the product that I'm interested in yeah. and what the brand feels like. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced eight out of ten hybrid vans out there 
are all coming in the container. Hey, Miss Peacock, you, you got, got some nice colours. It's a peacock distracting her. Yeah. Well, he's got pretty colours. Yeah. And it's a he. Do you think colours. though? Like this imported stuff and everything that's imported in this van, right? Windows, mm. components, ah. fridges, microwaves, same as any other van. Yeah. Yeah. These companies are over there. They're, they're overseas manufacturers. All they do differently is they take it to the factory over there and install it, as opposed to shipping it out here and then getting it installed here. So I'm not sure. Look, I get the point that people raise, but mm -hmm. you've got to look at the quality for yourself. And underneath this van, the way the chassis and the monocoque's put together, looks pretty good to me. I'm really not, it's not a concern to me, those kinds of things. Okay. If I walk inside and things are all falling apart and it looks like they're bodgy, there's many brands out there like that. You just don't feel comfortable when you have a look. You open the cupboards up and there's leftover bits of stuff everywhere. They haven't even swept it out. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm concerned. Even if it's an Australian manufacturer. You just don't, that says a whole lot about their organisation, doesn't it? Okay, what else have we got here? <clears throat> I think if you watch the video, we've addressed a fair few of those questions. But they were the main.